Okay, hey guys, so I'm <laughs> looking at my bullet journal. I just finished filming, so that's why I'm wearing the same outfit. Just finished filming the five things I hated about Korea video, and today I am doing the five things I loved about Korea video. So, um, this is the counterpart. Loved Korea, it was amazing. I absolutely would do it again. I absolutely would move there again. Uh, me and my friend, we really missed home right at the end. But um, we were even talking about it, for the past few weeks we've been talking about it, how much we would love to move back there and live there permanently, or at least for a few years, because it's just so amazing. It's such an amazing experience. If you've never been and you have the opportunity to go, definitely go. Uh, there's a very long list of things that I love there, but I have written down some of the things that I loved the most. So the very first thing on the list is cheapness slash sharing culture. So uh, this has probably been talked about a lot, but Korea is a very cheap country to live in if you're uh, just getting food. But if you're buying groceries and making food, it's very, very, very cheap. If you're eating out only, it's still pretty darn cheap. Um, so one of the meals that we got, especially when we were low on money, was at this place called Oh, what was it called? Korin Uh And I think Korin is a chain, but I'm not, don't quote me on that. There's one in Anam. Um, so, uh, at Korin they sell this thing called Wang Kimbap, which is King Kimbap. It's like super huge Kimbap. Um, and we would share a tuna one, and we would get a pot of uh, Shin Namyeon to share as well, because they just make it there with the Shin Namyeon packet, and add an egg in. And... Uh, me and my friend would share that and it was like two dollars and fifty cent each and it's so filling and it's actually pretty good Sometimes we would just crave it and go because we craved it um, And then pretty much everywhere you go has free water and free pansan so like kimchi and uh, radish um, What else? Sometimes there's like macaroni like pasta salad um, Things like that. So pretty much everywhere you go is gonna have that as a free get your own sort of serving type deal so it's very rare I'm trying to think I think it's only I'm thinking the only times I did it didn't do this was when I was eating foreign food but um, most every time I went somewhere even if it was just me and Maddie you have to eat with somebody else because most places are they give you a huge portion and you just split that cost with somebody else so the exceptions to that are like getting bibimbap or kimbap or um, like jjigae, like soups or stews, things like that are single serve. But a lot of a lot of places are group orders. But that's definitely something I love. Um, the next is just restaurant culture in general. So the first is the whole bali bali culture. So everything is so so fast. You sit down, you're gonna get your food within the next 10-15 minutes at most. So Eating in restaurants there is very in and out, very quick, um, which I loved because I hate going to restaurants here and you're waiting to get a seat, and then you're once you got your seat, you're waiting for the waiter to come back and take your drink orders, and then you're waiting for the waiter to take your food orders, and then you're waiting for your food, and then you're waiting for the waiter to bring the check, and it's just so difficult. Whereas in, in Korea, the general process is you go into a restaurant, you find your table, you don't have to wait for some hostess to seat you unless, it, like I said, again, unless it's a sort of fancier foreign restaurant. Um, you go in, you find your table, you sit down, and immediately someone comes up to you and says, you know, what do you want? So you have to pretty much know what you want when you sit down. Um, you order, and then they'll say, okay, you can get your water. So that's another thing is there's a very big do-it-yourself sort of culture. So you can go get your water. Um, and bring it back to your table. You can get whatever banchan you want. It's usually like a buffet sort of type deal. Um, get your banchan, go back to your table, and you just wait. And then, you know, five, ten minutes later, you have your food, and that's it. And at that same exact time, they either give you the check, or they just expect you to, like, know the price in your head, and then you pay as you're leaving. So there's no waiting for a check in Korea, for the most part. Um, there's also no tip for restaurants, which is so amazing. I miss that so much. America's so expensive because you pay 20% in tip automatically on every single meal. So it's so expensive to eat out here. Whereas in Korea, there's no tip at all. Uh, so it's not even a worry. And um, on top of that, same along the same lines of restaurant culture is service culture. Um, so when you buy things at stores, you get free items. And the biggest thing for me was um, service culture in food. So service is um, when you get free items. So it's just this sort of caring nature 
coming from everyone in Korea, which I really, really miss. I really, really loved. Um, in America, there's this sort of, I feel like, attitude about just deal with it yourself. Like, just deal with it. If you don't like it, deal with it. But in Korea, there's this effort to really make every single person who walks into a restaurant happy. And it's not even for a tip. So in America, if they're super nice to you, they're expecting a really good tip at the end. But in Korea, they're nice to you because they want you to like their restaurant. They want you to like their food. Um, and that's it. And then there's also a really big punch card culture in Korea. So getting free items after buying like 10. Um, so yeah, love, love, love that part about Korea. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move into public transportation slash just the ease of getting around. So um, public transportation in Korea, the most mainly used one are subways and buses. They both run on the same amount of currency, which is tea money. Um, and it's very cheap to go somewhere in Korea on the subway. And the great thing about subways in Korea, if you've ridden the subways in New York, and you hated them, don't worry because the subways in Korea are about a hundred times better. So they're very, very clean, very, very nice, very high tech and amazing. I love the subway system in Korea. That's probably the thing I miss the most about Korea is the ability to take the subway anywhere. Um, and also if you don't, you know, want to spend money on the subway, I think, uh, if you're very into like being active or something like that, walking is a really great option. So. Uh, I know a lot of places in America, like New York, walking is very easy to do, but in my town in particular, there's not a lot of sidewalks, public sidewalks that go down major highways or anything like that. In Korea, there are sidewalks, crosswalks, areas specifically made for pedestrians everywhere. Um, and it makes it very easy to get around when you don't want to spend tea money or put money on your subway card. It's just the ease of being able to walk everywhere without having to worry about traffic, whereas that's not really something I can do here, which is very disappointing because, you know, it's in a beautiful day outside. Sometimes, you know, maybe I want to walk somewhere, but not only do I not feel safe doing that here in America, which is very sad, but I also just don't have the ability to do it because there's not a lot of sidewalks. Um, the next thing is the sort of quietness, which is, I think, something that's not a lot, not mentioned a lot in these videos. Um, I'm a very, not introverted person, but I'm someone who can only handle but so much contacted in a day and so um one of my biggest I guess pet peeves about America is how loud it is all the time so if you're in a restaurant you're hearing everyone's conversation nobody really has I mean we have this thing called inside voices um which you know you're in a restaurant people are expected to be sort of softly speaking but it's not always the case and you're hearing other people's conversations people will be screaming at each other on the phone when they're in a store and it's just so much noise all the time, I feel like. And in Korea, something that, you know, was my biggest culture shock coming back to America is the fact that Korea is very quiet. So on the subway, you can't be loud. It's considered very rude. Um, if you're loud on the subway, if you talk loudly on the phone on the subway, it's considered very rude. Um, pretty much talking loudly anywhere, I think, is considered rude or just strange so people will really stare at you if you're very loud when you're out and about um and um restaurants are very quiet unless it's a very closely packed restaurant you're not going to hear other people's you know conversations and things so it's just it's it was so strange to me coming back to america how loud everything was i think i went into like a home goods and they were like ringing a bell every time someone donated something and it was crazy to me. And then I went into a restaurant and everybody was loud to me. It was it was like a volume change that I felt like I couldn't handle. So um, I definitely enjoyed the sort of quiet, peaceful, relaxing nature of Korea that I don't feel like I have here. And even though Korea is a metropolitan and it's a city, um, it was, and it's, you know, very hustle bustle, it still manages to do that in a very quiet, peaceful way, which is something I don't experience here in America and I definitely miss. Um, the next is just food, cafe, coffee culture, um, and uh, I miss the food. I miss Korean food in general. Uh, Puteciege is what I miss the most, probably. I miss it so much. Puteciege, uh, Tumdak, what else? Tumdangjige, um, uh, I miss. Um, I miss just kimbap and namyeon, like well made kimbap and things like that. Um, so, Korean food in general, I definitely miss, but the other. Um, thing is the cafe culture which we don't really have here in America so I think some cities are sort of getting into it um, some major cities in the US so uh, 
New York, LA, things like that. But for the most part, most cities in, in America have chain coffee places. So Starbucks, Greenberries, um, Dunkin' Donuts, things like that. Um, or they have a few select cafes, but I don't think it's anything nearly as it is in Korea. So you have cafes that specialize in uh, the way they decorate their cafes. So uh, I went to a Ryan cafe with cacao friends where everything is, you know, decorated like the cacao friends characters. Um, I went to, what else have I gone to? I went to um, a cafe that had sort of a boat, so that's sort of like ship theme um, and sold some specialty items. There are just so many cafes in Korea to try. I think you could live there your entire life and never try them all. Um, and it's insane. Um, even if you went to one every single day your entire life, I don't think you would be able to hit them all. And um, there are animal cafes, so sheep, raccoons, raccoons, uh, sheep, raccoons, cats, dogs, um, hedgehogs, cafes, um, and what else? Um, the desserts culture there, so most cafes sell desserts, they, they'll sell like actual cakes and pingsu and things like that. Um, so I miss cafes like selling desserts and you being able to sit down. At, a, a lot of cafes here in America sell pastries, but not really like full-fledged desserts. Um, and yeah, here I just feel like most people go and get coffee because they feel like they need it to wake up. But in Korea, it's a sort of way to hang out with your friends. So you'll sit at a cafe and drink coffee and it'll be in the evening time, it'll be any time of day, ignore my phone. Um, it's not necessarily the morning time. So loved that about Korea, definitely missed the cafe scene there. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any extra questions about Korea or just questions in general you'd like to ask me, leave them in the comment section below. Give me a like or a thumbs up on this video and if you're not subscribed to me yet and you want to subscribe, hit that subscribe button and send me some love and I will see you guys in the next video.